In this video, we're going to be taking a look at a $219 laptop that I recently picked up from my local Walmart during their Cyber Monday sale. And I gotta say, this isn't a bad little deal if you know what you're getting into. It's not rocking one of the super low-end 4-core chips. We've actually got an 8-core CPU here. And you will find cheaper laptops online, $129 for something with an N4500, but they only usually come with 4 gigs of RAM and they can hardly get out of the way, especially if they're running Windows 11. With this, we do get a little more RAM and a 15.6 inch 1080 display. Now this is far from a high-end gaming laptop. This is more for the budget-minded, looking for something that they can browse the web on, check emails, document editing, and do some light gaming and emulation with. But before we get started here, I do want to mention that this video is sponsored by URCD Keys. The main thing I pick up over here are Windows 11 Pro Keys. And right now, if you use code ETA, you can get 25% off. So at checkout, we'll just enter the code ETA. That's going to bring the price down to $23.31. They're going to email you that key, and then you can activate Windows. Speaking of that, let's head over to a new PC that I recently built. As you can see, we're running Windows 11. And from settings, we're going to go to activation settings. It's going to tell us that we're not active. We don't have a key installed. So we're just going to paste it right in here. Choose next. It's going to activate Windows for us, and we're ready to go. If you're in need of cheap Windows keys, I'll leave a link in the description. And remember, you can use code ETA for 25% off. I gotta say, I do love the overall design here, albeit it is constructed of plastic. But if you take a look at the bottom here, I mean, those orange accents, I know they're just kind of rubber feet for the laptop itself, but it looks really nice like this. And when it comes to I.O., over here on the right-hand side, we've got a 35 millimeter audio jack. USB Type-C, and this is Type-C 3.2 Gen 1. It will do video out. We also have a full-size USB 3.2 port here, full-size HDMI, and our power input. Over on the left-hand side, not much else going on, but we do have a single USB 2.0 port. And given the price here, coming in at $219, when it comes to the overall specs, this Vivo book is powered by the Intel Core i3 N305. We've got eight cores, eight threads. It's gonna clock up to 3.8 gigahertz. A 32 compute unit Intel iGPU up to 1250 megahertz. Eight gigabytes of onboard RAM. So it's DDR4 running at 3200 megatransfers per second. And unfortunately there's no way to upgrade it. With these lower cost laptops that we're seeing hit in the market for the past few years. I mean, there's just no way to upgrade that RAM. It also has 256 gigabytes of internal storage. A 15.6 inch IPS display with a resolution of 1920 by 1080, 42 watt hour battery, and it's running Windows 11 out of the box. The trackpad here feels pretty good. It's not the best that I've used. Uh, it's definitely a smaller trackpad when you compare it to some of the higher end laptops on the market, but it's something that'll definitely get you by. Keyboard, got some good response here. She's in a chiclet style keyboard like most of these Asus Vivo books do. Pretty quick little system with that N305, and it's definitely a big upgrade over the N4500 and even the N150, which we'll see in a lot of laptops, especially during these sales like this. And just to show you here, yeah, 219 over at Walmart, and uh, my local Walmart actually had one left in stock, so I figured I'd go ahead and pick it up so we can make a quick video on it. And again, like I mentioned, this is not a high-end laptop by any means, but it could work out for a lot of people out there. And what I'm going to do now is connect this to my game capture so we can get a better look at everything. There's a few things that I wanted to show you here. We're going to test a few things out. I also want to test out some gaming and emulation on this machine. So let's go ahead and move over there now. So I've been up and running with the system for a little while now, and it's a pretty snappy little setup. I've got everything installed that we're going to be testing here. As you can see, we've got that Intel Core i3 N305, and I've always been a big fan of this chip, especially over something like the N105, because we've got eight cores and eight threads here instead of four cores and four threads. It does make a pretty big difference. The main downside to this laptop is the fact that you can only get it with up to eight gigs of RAM at that price point, and I believe that's as high as they go with this specific unit. But uh, I've tested the N305 and many PCs before, this seems to be around the cheapest N305 device that I've been able to test so far. Along with that 305, we've also got the Intel UHD graphics. And I'll tell you, when you first boot this thing up, there's one thing you're probably going to want to change here. You're going to open up My Asus, and from Device Settings, we're going to go down to the Fan Profile. Now, the Fan Profile also controls TDP. 
So we've got a whisper mode, we've got a standard mode, we've got a performance mode. I'm gonna be in performance mode. That fan will kick up, but this thing doesn't get loud at all. I mean, it's a pretty quiet little setup, even in performance mode. But this way we can reach around a 28 watt TDP, 25 sustain across the board with the N305 when you're maxing out the CPU and GPU, which is gonna give you much better performance than standard or whisper. And I do think a laptop like this would be great for somebody looking for a cheap laptop for web browsing, email checking, uh, document editing. You could do some photo editing on this also. I wouldn't go crazy with 100 layers in Photoshop. Using something like GIMP on this machine is going to work out pretty well. So loading up web pages, not too bad. And I was really hoping this had a backlit keyboard. It does say at the very bottom that there's an option for a backlit keyboard and a fingerprint sensor. But you can see that... Uh, Looks like we only get that eight gigs of RAM and it is DDR4, 512 gigabyte SSD and fast charging on this system. So 60% uh, in 49 minutes, which isn't super fast charging by any means, but for a cheap laptop, not too bad. Overall, I mean, I do like the design of it. It's a pretty nice little setup. I mean, it looks like a really good little laptop and I do love the color schemes here, but yeah, it's really snappy when it comes to web browsing and even 4K video playback. So we'll head over to YouTube real quick and I'll find a 4K video that we can check out. And we'll go with a 4K, let's do a Sony demo here. I think it's the food demo actually. But yeah, this should load right up. And I'm gonna pause it. We do wanna go to 4K here and I wanna turn on stats for nerds. So right up here, we should have our drop frames and we might get a couple on the initial load in. But that's kind of normal for most machines, and you can see we got two there. But throughout this 4K 60 FPS video, I mean, it's not going to drop any more frames. The N305 does have more than enough power to run 4K 60 content, even 4K 60 HDR when you're connected to an HDR display. And I've had good luck with these chips for sure. Even something like the N150, which is a much lower end chip at around an 11 watt TDP, handles 4K, so I knew we'd have great performance over here, given that we've got a more powerful iGPU. But yeah, so far for everyday normal use case scenarios with this little thing, it's been great. Uh, I did run some benchmarks and I wanna show you those real quick. So let's move over there now. I ran, two, I ran two quick benchmarks here and at the top we've got Geekbench 6, coming in with a single core of 1,289, multi 4,427. Not horrible, but it's not going to win any benchmark awards, especially when it comes to that iGPU. Wildlife Extreme coming in with a 1,403. When it comes to gaming on this machine, it would be great for indie gaming and older games. If you take a look in the top left-hand corner, I've got Afterburner running. And this is Silk Song at 1080. There's no other graphic settings that we can use here but I knew it was gonna run at 60 FPS and we've got a 60 Hertz panel here. TDP is anywhere from 13 Watts up to almost 15 with this game at 1080. So it's not drawing a lot of energy right now. I wanted to go back a bit, so I figured I'd test out Left 4 Dead 2. And if you wanna do Skyrim on this machine, the N305 does run it pretty well, but you gotta drop it down to 720. Right now we're at 1080, low medium settings here with Left 4 Dead 2. I mean, it still looks fine. It's an older game, so it's not going to look absolutely stunning. But with the older stuff, yeah, I mean, this N305 is great for games like this for sure. But I got to say, one of my favorite use case scenarios for this chipset, and now this laptop in general, is emulation. Here's the GameCube emulator running Automotilista at 3x. So we're at around 1080p with it matching the screen's resolution using the DirectX 11 back in. And I do consider this a mid-range game to run, but when it comes down to it, I mean, most of the library that's compatible with the Dolphin emulator will be playable on this chipset, whether you have to drop it down to 720 or even native, but a lot of these games will run at that 3x resolution scale. I also wanted to show off a little bit of PS2 emulation. Here's God of War 2, and we're at the native resolution with the DirectX 11 backend. We were sitting around 54 FPS at 720, and I do think maybe swapping over to Vulkan with this little UHD iGPU may help out. But either way you look at it, PS2 is playable here. And overall, with this N305, I mean, for indie gaming, old school PC games, and emulation like GameCube, Wii, PS2, PSP, Dreamcast, it's going to cover a lot of different games.
The last thing I wanted to talk about here was battery life with this laptop and we've got a 42 watt hour battery which isn't huge and through my testing screen brightness was set at 50%, native video playback, that's not streaming from YouTube, that's natively playing from an external drive or internal drive, over four hours, web browsing online obviously, get around three hours of runtime, and indie gaming and emulation mixed use around two hours. We do have that quick charger, so-called quick charge that they say, but it would be nice to see at least a 60 watt hour battery in something like that. But again, the whole setup was only 219 bucks. Overall, I personally don't think this is a bad setup for the price. Now I wouldn't want to pay any more for something like this. It's got a really nice design. I mean, we've got a decent amount of power here with the N305 given the price point. And if you want to go up from here, I mean, moving from 219 up to 500 is a pretty big jump. That's probably where you need to go to get more performance than we're seeing here. If you're interested in learning a little more about this Vivo book or maybe pick one up, I'll leave some links in the description. And if you want to see Linux running on this, just let me know in the comments below. It'd also be really cool if you could hit that like button and think about subscribing so you know when I post the next one. But that's it for this one. And like always, thanks for watching.